Hello viewers and welcome back to Ducascopy TV, I'm Natalie MacDonald. Up next in the studio I'm joined by Bruno SDA for a rundown of the technical charts. Bruno, thank you very much for coming in. Good morning Natalie. Okay, now last week we looked at a possible ending pattern on the S&P 500. Did the markets hear that message? Well, it was picked up by part of the market, uh, the market uh, at least which is uh, looking at the VIX index. Uh, here we have on a weekly chart of the VIX, which is a measure of fears, huh? the price of puts especially is reflected in there when people want to buy insurances. And we see here a weekly engulfing pattern on the way up. That means that volatility should move up. And we see also that it was previously after sec seven, eight weeks on the way down, relatively oversold. Therefore, it has some momentum to pop up further. Is it going to continue right away then? Right away, well, it looks like. Uh, see uh, what just happened during the last week where uh, nothing uh, was almost open because we had this Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, we see it was very uh, in a very narrow range and Friday, uh, the half day opened and Monday, it just popped up quickly. Uh, it's also do something which is not too nice. You see these red lines narrowing very mm -hmm. uh, much, which are uh, the volatility, historical volatility of this index. So we have the volatility of the volatility. And that one has been compressed like a spring, uh, held down for about 15 days or almost three weeks. And that's too much, too long. And uh, such a compression is like a volcano. If it, once it breaks out, it can explode quite a lot. Well, Bruno, it is December, and as we sort of touched on last week, historically things are either very quiet or extremely bullish on equity. That's usually <coughs> right, and this is the rule. Unfortunately, I'm afraid we might have the exception to the rule on this uh, December. But let's step a little bit back, backwards first to understand why we, we could have such exception. Uh, number one, we have here monthly charts going back from 2003. We had uh, the crash of 2009 or the financial crisis, depending how you want to call it. And then since, since then, for now 56 months in a row, we are moving up. And that, that's quite a lot for technicians. Usually you have this, this small cycle here, which are calling for a 48 month cycle or so-called four year cycle. And then you have a, a bigger one, which is an uh, investment cycle lasting for 10 years. And the nice thing, the good news about that was that it bottomed in the end of 2011 and it starts a new cycle up. Okay, so it basically compensates the risk which exists on the four-year cycle, which is probably due for low in 2014. How do you explain then so many cycles? Well, you explain so many cycles, uh, the interaction of this cycle by the fact that uh, technical analysis doesn't exist in a vacuum, but uh, it reflects the expectation about the real economy. And in the real economy, there are different levels of decision taken. There are short-term decisions, maybe uh, related in the past to the inventory cycle, that's so-called four-year cycle, the so-called kitchen cycle that we have here. here. You know that now things are different because things are on, on, on time delivery and therefore inventory play a lesser role. That could be an explanation why this four year cycle load doesn't show up as regularly as they used to be, uh, at least uh, until 2002. And then this 10 year cycle is, is a long term decision cycle because it's so called related to the investment cycle. So if you make a big investment in a big plan, for example, it's not just done overnight, but it takes a few years to plan and then to implement and then to become fully efficient. And, and longer term, uh, of course, you might have a generational cycle if you combine maybe 40 years uh, of, of working life, for example, and that we presented them here as having a major 40 year cycle from 1974 having bottom here in 2011. That's the good news. That means that what's going to come up in fluctuation in the future is going to be underpinned by a positive force. And that allows probably after one or two 
four year cycle, maybe in four to six years, to one come out of this huge trading range that we have since 20, since 2000, basically. Uh, for 13 years, we have been moving sideways and we hope that we could go again on an upper path like from 1982 to 2000, which was a nice investment period where you could buy and hold. But now... Bruno, you do seem a touch concerned about the outlook. What could the worst outlook be? Well, the worst outlook uh, would be the exception to the rules. Uh, and that would mean that instead of pursuing the uprise into December slowly, like a long, slow stream, uh, we would have a wake up call moving back to the support trend line. And the support trend line joining the lows since July would come around 1740. And uh, if then, let's assume we are December 15 in, in two weeks, uh, then the, the market rebounds, but rebounds too little, then we might enter in this further hard time until, until March. But we can still have a chance to continue the slow upward rise, maybe if by December we get the good news. Brené, thank you very much. You're welcome. Bruno SDA there, who will be back with us next Tuesday for more technical analysis. But before then, don't go away as the Dukoscopy TV team will have plenty more exclusive interviews and FX analysis for you. Goodbye for now.